Hey there. I've had a few comments where people are saying, you know, you're an error about the teaching of the soul, but then not elaborating what the error is. So I'm not sure exactly what is being said out there that I teach. Uh, and I did do a teaching on it the other day, but it was at the end of quite a long thing. I'm not sure everybody got to that part. Uh, the salvation of the soul, if we get saved today, if I die today, my spirit, soul, and body is preserved complete until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. The whole, you know, My body will be transfigured. My soul will be transformed. And my spirit is already made alive. You know, uh, And whatever I am will be saved. Okay? And so we're saved, you know? And we are a living soul. And, and Jesus saves our... He atoned for our soul and saved, you know, yes. But there is a present tense salvation is more than just being saved from your sins. Salvation includes everything that God's going to do forever. It's all part of his great salvation uh, that raised us up with Christ and seated us in the heavenlies of the ages to come. He might show forth the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ. That's all part of his great salvation. Hebrews, I, I, I'm basically repeating what I said, but Hebrews 2 talks about not neglecting so great of salvation which was spoken by the Lord of the prophets concerning the subjection of the world to come and sub and the angels are our ministers so salvation is more than just oh I got my sins forgiven salvation is God's great salvation it's what he's accomplishing by the resurrection of Christ in producing the new creation and it goes on forever and there is an opportunity today while it is called today, because today is the day of salvation, to enjoy that salvation. And Peter calls it the salvation of your soul. So he says, you know, you've been regenerated unto a living hope by the resurrection from, uh, of Jesus Christ from the dead. That is your spirit. But now um, you are going through various trials. You rejoice in that salvation. But you're going through various trials that the trying of your faith may be... Uh, which is more precious than gold that perishes, may abound to praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And then he talks about, uh, whom having not seen you love, um, and though you haven't seen him, you believe in him, and you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, uh, receiving the end of your faith, the object of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And the soul, again, is the mind, will, and the emotion. And you can be a saved Christian and be miserable and not be enjoying the salvation of your soul. Does it mean your, sa salva your soul is not ultimately saved? No. But when you are full of faith and you go through the trial of faith and you are, uh, and your faith rebounds or abounds to glory to God, there is a rejoicing that we've all, if we're Christians, have tasted at some point, where we've tasted something where the Lord is so real, thank you so much, and I feel the seal of the Spirit, I can sense Him in my soul. Uh, he's the glory and the lifter of my head, and my, I'm dripping with oil and the enjoyment of my salvation. That's called the salvation of your soul, that the angels marvel at. He says the angels desire to look into this because uh, it's a mystery to them, since they see God and we don't. And yet we rejoice with this joy because we've been brought into the presence of God and we look not to those things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. Now that corresponds with what Paul's talking about in 2 Corinthians. He says, these momentary light afflictions um, are working in us a exceeding, great, uh, exceeding weight of eternal glory. Uh, while we look not to the things which are seen, but to the things which are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the unseen things are eternal. And he's talking about we all with unveiled face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are being transformed into that same image even as by the Lord's Spirit. He's talking about being delivered into the liberty we have as children of God by enjoying our salvation, by beholding something of Christ where he shines on us. And God, who shined, he called light out of darkness, he's shining in our hearts to illuminate the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And there's something called transformation that is for the soul. My spirit is perfect, but my soul, my mind, will, and emotions, my mind needs to be renewed 
and my soul needs to be saved from the dumps and from depression and from fear, right? It's the same thing that John talks about where he talks about being perfected in the love of God that you may have boldness in the day of judgment. Now little children abide in him so that when he appears you may have confidence in his coming. It's the same thing Paul talks about in Philippians where he says uh, that your love may abound yet more and more in all discernment that you may approve by testing the things which differ and are more excellent so that you may be sincere and without offense unto the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ under the praise and glory of God. And Paul talks again in Philippians about a present tense salvation. We already know he's saved, and yet he says in Philippians 1.19, This shall turn out to my salvation through your petition and the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that as always, even now, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether through life or through death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. The salvation was, he said, my, these afflictions and these bonds are turning out to be a platform for the testimony of Christ so that the whole Praetorian guard knows that my bonds are manifest as being in Christ. So he said, you know, I rejoice in my sufferings, which are for your glory, because he's full of the enjoyment of Christ to the point where it's overflowing. And Christ is being magnified in his body and he's living Christ. And he calls that salvation. Doesn't mean he's going to be saved from prison, but in his situation, he's experiencing the salvation of his soul, and it's becoming a testimony. That's the exact, that's the exact same thing Peter's describing, and that's what Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 4. He's talking about this is what constitutes the New Testament ministry. These momentary light afflictions are working in us an exceeding weight of eternal glory while we look not to the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. And we're being transformed as we behold him. And that becomes, from glory to glory, that becomes our ministry. That becomes how the word of life is reached, the uh, reaching people and making epistles of Christ. It's rooted in the salvation of our soul as we're brought through various things and we experience the comforts uh, from God, the Father of comforts and the God of all mercy. He's here for your soul. Okay, we need salvation of our soul every day. We need the shepherd to restore our soul. You know, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. My soul needs to be restored because of who I am in my flesh, in my history, and the things that happen to me in this life. I need my feet washed. And that is his ministry, to nourish me uh, in my soul with the eternal life. Romans 8 says, If Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. And he says, The mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. And that word is zoe. It is resurrection life. The, re the resurrected life that's in my spirit is for my soul and for my enjoyment. Jesus called it a fountain of living water that could spring up unto everlasting life. And he said, when I'm thirsty, I can come to him and drink. Where do I experience thirst? Primarily in my soul. Uh, read the Psalms, you know. When I'm, when I'm thirsty and I feel like I'm in a dry land, what do I need? I need my salvation. I, have, I am saved. He installed in me a fountain of living water to spring up unto everlasting life. And now he says, anytime you're thirsty, just come to me and drink. He who believes on me, uh, as the scripture says, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And this he spoke of the spirit who was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Well, now he's been glorified and we've received the spirit as a drink for the salvation of our soul and the renewing of our mind and the uplifting of our emotions so that we transcend our situation. So just as Paul spoke in Philippians 1 about this shall turn out to be for salvation through your petition and the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, he said in Philippians 2, now you do all, th in my, not in my uh, presence only, but also in my absence, uh, work out your own, um, as obedient children, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who operates in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Oh, that means we're not saved yet. We got to get saved and we might lose our salvation. You better work on it. No, he tells him what it means. Do all things without murmuring and complaining 
so that you may be uh, children of God, harmless and without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine as luminaries holding forth the word of life. What is the salvation that will work out? Well, don't be complaining about all the persecutions and the fact that your adversaries are coming at you. You're not a victim. This is an opportunity for Christ to shine. Hold forth the word of life. That's what it means to work out your salvation. Shine as a luminary. Okay? And it's not by a commandment that says do not complain. It's by an infilling of the spirit that comes from the gospel, the, the word of life. And Paul was the pattern. This is turning out to me for salvation through the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, and I'm here for the and in chains for the testimony of Christ, so that my bonds are manifested everywhere as being in Christ, so that even the Praetorian Guard is saved, and those in Caesar's household greet you. I mean, that was a miracle. And then he said, uh, with all boldness, my confident expectation is this. He defined it. This shall turn out to be for salvation through your petition and the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that with all boldness, as always, even now, Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether through life or death. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to be terrified of my adversaries. I'm not going to uh, bury my light under a bushel. I'm going to hold forth the word of life and shine as a luminary because of the great salvation of God and the supply of his spirit. In the midst of these situations, I'm going to be uh, found rejoicing with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of my faith, the salvation of my soul. And, you know, he, he even in Philippian jail in the book of Acts, he and uh, Barnabas, was it Barnabas or was Silas? They experienced that. Everybody's in prison. It's all miserable. They all think they're going to die, and they start singing songs, magnifying the Lord. What does it mean to magnify the Lord? It's, oh, my soul, magnify the Lord. That is the salvation of your soul in the present moment. That's what I'm talking about if I'm talking about the salvation of the soul. And then there is an opportunity every day in the participation of the salvation of the soul and being renewed and gaining Christ, he calls it gaining Christ in Philippians 3, pursuing him to gain him, to be found in him, and to know him, uh, that, that, that is an opportunity to gain him where he's wrought more into your being. And guess what? There is a reward for that. So that in the next age, you will shine forth more brightly based on how much Christ you gain. And part of it is God's sovereignty because we don't really get to choose what we go through. I'm not Paul. I can't go through what he went through. I wouldn't be able to endure it. He gained a lot of Christ through it. But the thief on the cross, he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He was saved, spirit, soul, and body. So there's tenses of salvation. And if you don't understand that, like I mean, like our body has yet to be saved. It's called the redemption of our body. We look forward to that. We have not yet been entirely saved in time. But from God's perspective, those who he called, he justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. It's a finished deal in God's mind. But it's like thunder and lightning, where it's one event separated by time. First there's the thunder, you hear that, and then later there's the lightning. Still, it's one event, you know. And, and we are time creatures, so we see these things unfold as a process, but from God's point of view, they're finished. So we need to just be careful when we're talking about, okay, me as an experience, a creature in time experiencing something versus God's point of view, which is it's done. And what I think a lot of the confusion is that people want to uh, negate the process in the Christian life and set and, and look at it only positionally and say, it's all done, which it is. But then if you say, and there's a process, they say, no, you're just uh, now you're denying the work of the Holy spirit. <laughs> which is not true. We're talking about enjoying the work of the Holy Spirit. We're actually teaching what it is to walk in the Spirit and to enjoy Him. Uh, and the fruit is joy and peace. So, I, again, I'm not exactly sure what people are talking about because they're all coming at me and saying, you're an error about the salvation of the soul. And the only thing I can think of is, well, this is what I teach about the soul. Um, somebody said that Dave says that the soul isn't saved yet. Well, it is saved. If I die today, it's fine. Body, soul, and spirit preserved complete to the day of Christ. And yet, I have an opportunity to gain him today. And I know Christians who don't enjoy Christ, and yet they are saved. And their soul, they'll be rejoicing in heaven with me. But right now, they're miserable because they don't know how to be filled with the Spirit. We're commanded to be filled with the Spirit. Where? In our soul. 
Our mind, will, and emotions need to be saved from this present evil age and from our environments, from of our, all of our offenses, you know. If you say it doesn't, then, boy, I'd like to learn what you're doing. You should write books like Tony Robbins. <laughs> uh, no, we're all sinners. We all have the stain of Adam on our soul. And we all have an opportunity every day to be enter rest and be renewed. That's all I'm talking about. And... So I'm clarifying that for my subs because I've had some of my subs now suddenly say, you're an error about this. And it's like, okay, you're hearing this from somewhere, but you're not specifying what exactly I'm erring about. So I'm kind of having to guess. So I'll just re-articulate what I believe the Bible says about our soul. There is a salvation of our soul. There is a present tense salvation. And yet we are preserved complete in him. It's a finished deal in God's mind. But as long as it's called today... We have an opportunity to gain Christ, and anything we gain of him today, we can enjoy today, and we will shine with tomorrow. So it's all good from my perspective. All right, take care.